What do galaxies, blood vessels, trees, and mountains all have in common? Well, they all contain an event patterns known as fractals. The term fractal was coined by the mathematician Benoît Madalbrot in 1975 in his similar work, The Fractal Geometry of Nature. Benoît Madalbrot is best known for his discovery of mathematics of the Madalbrot sets, which can be programmed into basic line of code that create an infinite stream of changing self similar patterns. But for today, we're gonna focus on just two fractals core curve and the mega sponge. As all the other fractals, the core curve has a special property. If we keep zooming, you will see the same pattern infinitely. Well, we can create it by starting from a equilateral triangle and then we remove the inner third of each side and then replace it with another equilateral triangle. If we repeat that process over and over, we will end up with a cock snowflake. This fractal is really interesting. Although it has a finite area, it appears to have an infinite perimeter. As the number of generations increases, the area does increase but less and less each time. For the core curve visualization, I used Bygen. Well, to put it simple, I made two classes. One vector class with a rotation function that takes an angle as an argument, and the other is a segment class that has a function to generate new segments and another function to just throw the segment on the screen. just pulling it together and yeah that is basically it the full code is in the description if you want to check it out
For the Mega Sponge, I tried to use P5. It was my first time using P5 in Python. I always used it in JavaScript, but sadly, P5 is really slow in Python. I mean, seriously, look at this. <coughs> well, for the Mega Sponge, we're gonna start with a cube and then divide it into 20 smaller cubes, like a Rubik's Cube. And then we remove the 7 cubes at the center of the original cube. And uh, we just do this operation on the other 20 smaller cube left and we can repeat this process as much as we want. For this one, I didn't take, I didn't like how, how slow it was in Python, so I made two versions, one in C Sharp and the other in Python. Both the links are in the description if you want to check it out. And uh, also, I will probably be using JavaScript, C Sharp, C++ or sometimes Python in the upcoming projects. Thank you.